You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how you can transmit data through light. The main principle behind this video is going to be very similar to the one on how we made a plasma speaker. And so if you haven't yet, you can go watch that video which will be linked in the description showing you how you can modulate high voltage to produce sound. But anyways, let's get to building this circuit. And so here's the circuit that I designed to accomplish this. If you want to learn how to make this circuit, I made a video a while back showing how to make a frequency generator. And so that will be linked in the description below giving you a step-by-step -step process on how to put one out onto a breadboard. However, please note there are a few differences between this circuit and the one I show in that video. Since we don't want to be hearing the main frequency generated by this, this capacitor value is much different. And so rather than the 4.7 microfarads, it's going to just be a 1 nanofarad capacitor from the pin 2 to ground. Also, instead of using high value potentiometers, I just used one 50,000 ohm potentiometer. And lastly, on pin 5, rather than just having a capacitor then straight to ground, we're going to have a capacitor to smooth out the audio, and then we're going to have our audio port. And so one end of the audio port is going to be connected up to pin 5, while the other end is going to be connected up to ground. So those are the only three differences between this frequency generator part and the video that I showed back then on how to build it. So if you do go back and watch how to build it, make sure you apply those changes. And so here I actually have that circuit all put out onto this perf board. The capacitor connected up to pin 2 and ground is very responsible for changing the frequency. And so having a lower capacitance here will give you a higher frequency. However, since I use this little circuit I set up quite a bit to test different things, it makes your life a lot easier if you put one of these PCB two-slot terminals on. This way you can simply change the capacitor value without going through the process of soldering them all together. To supply the power, I'm going to be using my variable DC power supply. However, if you don't have one of these, you can also just use a 9 volt battery. So now I'm going to connect up the power supply to the input of my frequency generator. Now the output of the frequency generator is going to be pin 3. So I have a wire going from that and I attached it up to this speaker here. And now the other end of the speaker I'm going to attach to this wire here. This wire is just going straight to the negative side of the power supply. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the power supply. As you can hear, we're getting quite a high pitched sound from the speaker. So I'm just going to put this screwdriver here and turn this potentiometer until we can't hear it. It seems that I found a nice spot right here where I can't hear anything coming out of the speaker, yet the frequency is still going. Okay, so now to visualize this, I have that frequency hooked up to my oscilloscope. If we zoom in here, you can start to see the square wave pattern that this is outputting. Now watch what happens to the frequency as I turn the potentiometer. As you can see, we can get it to be a higher frequency or a lower frequency. Now according to my oscilloscope right now, each cycle is lasting around 8 microseconds. And so since the frequency is going to be equal to 1 second divided by the time of each wave, we can then calculate that the frequency we're tuned to currently is somewhere around 125,000 Hz. Now going back to our frequency generator, let's attach an aux cable to our audio input. And so now with it all hooked up, you can hear the audio playing from my phone onto the speaker. And so now that we know that we're at a correct frequency where we can't hear it, yet audio can still get through clearly, let's go ahead and attach it up to the oscilloscope and see what the waveform looks like now. Okay, so now with it attached back up to the oscilloscope, you can see that the waveform is jostling each time the audio is going through it. Since the carrier frequency, aka our square wave, is somewhere around 125,000 Hz, and since the audio that we are hearing was a much lower frequency, you can't really see much modulation happening. And so when we're playing this audio, what's actually happening is that the top part here of the square wave is becoming modulated slightly to the audio frequency. And if we zoom in very closely to this top portion, you can see the slight audio modulation that's happening there. And so now the plan is going to be using that DC audio modulation to modulate these LEDs to blink very quickly. And in turn, we should be able to use these quick blinking LEDs to send the signal to a solar panel. Now the reason we need this circuit here is to make sure that all the audio modulation happens on a positive scale. Also using this, we can easily amplify it up and apply it to many different schematics besides just this LED. Now for my circuit, you can see that we use three LEDs in series and two branches of these three LEDs in parallel. Now these LEDs have a forward voltage of around 2.79 volts. So although to deal with the 9 volts going in, I found that you can get away with putting three of these in series, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put a fourth LED also in series with these to compensate for that voltage. Doing this will make it so you'll have a lower probability that the LEDs will burn out. And so here I have these LEDs pushed onto a board. Now here in fact I actually have three branches in parallel with only two in series for each one. This is probably a bad idea because it might burn out the LEDs. However, I'm planning on only running this at around 7 volts. And so now you can see there's one component missing, and that's this guy right here. This device is called a MOSFET, or also known as a transistor. Well, specifically a MOSFET is a certain type of transistor, but either should work fine in this case. Although it's a bit overkill, the one I'm going to be using is this IRFP260N. The pin configuration for this goes gate drain source. And on our circuit, this side's going to be our gate, this side's going to be our drain, and this side's going to be our source. 
So what this will do is that when we apply a positive voltage to be able to flow through this side, it will also allow a voltage to flow through this side. So by using that pulsing DC current, the DC going to this side should also gain that pulsing waveform since it is subsequently being turned on and off at each high and low of the square wave. So in a way, we're sort of amplifying that signal so that it's a bit stronger on this end over here. And now let's go ahead and turn it on to verify that it's working. As you can see, the LEDs are on, but if I turn off the frequency generator, the LEDs will turn off. Although these LEDs look like they're just regularly on, they should be turning off and on with a high frequency. And that high frequency is modulated to the audio input. And so now I'm going to take this solar panel and attach it up to the oscilloscope. Okay, now with the solar panel hooked up, you can see that the ambient lighting in the room is giving it about 3 volts. However, watch what happens when I shine the LED configuration that we made. As you can see, the voltage is raising slightly, but let's go ahead and zoom in on that and see if we can see the modulated frequency. And so as you can see with the frequency generator hooked up to my phone, as we shine the LED and I change the frequency, you can see that the frequency that the solar panel is producing is also being modulated. Now since the modulation on the solar panel is only a few millivolts, in order to hear it properly, we need to attach an amplifier to the solar panel. We can do that by having one of these, where instead of the frequency generator, it would be the solar panel, and then instead of the LEDs, we'd just have the speaker, and they would all be going to a common ground, and that should amplify it. However, since I have this powerful amplifier, I'm just going to be using this to amplify our signal. And so now I'm just going to connect the solar panel to this audio jack using alligator clips. I have the LEDs being held in place by this clip, and adjacent to the LED I have the solar panel. Now let's go ahead and turn up the amplifier and see what we can hear. Now the amplifier is barely turned up right now, and this isn't on, but notice how we can still hear something. And when I cover it, we can hear less. Inside my lab, the lighting are these fluorescent tubes. Now that it looks steady, these tubes actually flick on and off at a very fast rate. And so the frequency of them flickering on and off is being transmitted into our speaker. So by turning off the lights, you can hear that it stops. Okay, so now with just the natural light, you can't hear anything. Now let's go ahead and turn on the LEDs and see if we can hear the signal being sent through. For this first test, I'm going to be using this frequency generator app I have on my phone so that I can easily distinguish if that frequency is being played. Okay, so now the light's going through. Let me go ahead and hit play on my frequency generator. As you can hear, that high pitch frequency is being sent through. And as I modulate that frequency, you can hear outputs on the speaker. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and try to play a song through the lights. Now watch as I bring my hand in front of it. As you can hear, the transmission is stopped whenever the light is blocked from hitting the solar panel. Using this modulation of the light, you could really send any kind of data. And besides being a higher frequency, there's not really that much of a difference between this and using just plain radio waves. Although a radio wave is a much lower frequency than visible light, when we use them to transmit data, we're doing a very similar thing of just modulating the amplitude. In fact, the AM in AM radio stands for amplitude modulation, and things like Wi-Fi work in this very same way. Since the visible light is at a much higher frequency, you could theoretically send much more data through at a given moment. And also, if you're modulating something like a laser, it has the added benefit that it will only go to its target destination. So now you know you can use visible light to transmit information. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and or learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. And if you have any video suggestions for things you'd like to see on this channel, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. If you want to see my weekly science videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you haven't yet, hitting the little bell icon will notify you whenever I post a video. That's all for today's video, so please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you the thermoelectric effect and how you can make your very own thermoelectric generator.